Um, well, I want to represent the party, really, for democracy, so everyone can vote for the party that they want to vote for. Um, that's why I want to stand as a council candidate, it's because I'm local, so I know the local issues, um, you know, I know what matters to local people. Um, living local, I think, is a massive benefit, as opposed to living outside of the area, because you see the area at all times of the day, and you know what, what matters to people, and you speak to people, just in passing. You know, as you're walking down the street, if that's, that, if that's the road you live on, you live in your constituency, then you're constantly speaking to people all the time. You know, you even, like, I quite often speak to the council workers who come down when they're letter picking, and I always have a bit of a chat with them. So I sort of, I like to engage with local people, so I'd like to help them, really. Um, I've been involved in politics for probably about five years since the last general election. Um, it was going, I was at school at the time and all my friends were talking about all the parties so I thought I'd go online and have a look for myself at what was out there. Um, so I read UKIP's policies and I just found they were the ones that fitted best with my views. So um, that's sort of where I got involved really. The big policies that got me involved is democracy. I don't like the fact that we're being governed from Brussels and animal rights. Um, I think the common fisheries policy is horrific and it's destroyed the marine environment in the North Sea. And um, also I think that the animal rights policies, such as the live animal exportation of animals from uh, the UK or from other EU countries to other U EU countries for slaughter is just appalling and the conditions the animals are travelling in is just horrific. And I think that's something that really needs to be dealt with. Um, I sort of, like I said, got involved when I was like at school um, and I just kept more engaged and more engaged and everything that UKIP started to say, I just started to agree with more and more, the more that I sort of listened to what all the candidates were saying and the more I watched television programmes, the more UKIP got represented, I sort of thought, yeah, that really does, you know, really do agree with what they're saying. And um, sort of like the current Tory government is just absolutely horrific. I mean, the fact that the Liberal Democrats have said that they were going to scrap university fees and they've actually, you know, increased them. And the fact that food banks have increased horrifically under David Cameron's government is just despicable. And I think it really needs to be dealt with. Um, I'd make sure that all the local people represented. So issues such as like litter, um, noise pollution, um, like there's a lot of prostitution and crime and like robberies and crime in the area so I'd raise those sorts of issues and I just make sure that I'm voting to protect vulnerable people and services that really matter to local people. I mean the great thing about UKIP is we don't have um, a party whip so I could vote however I see best for my constituents and I think that's what sort of local politics particularly has been lacking in recent years you know like in Rotherham you just had a Labour a, a Labour um, council that's just dominated completely and they haven't they haven't done things to help the local constituents and that's what I think a UKIP alternative offers, a, a candidate who can actually stand up for local constituents and stand up for their needs and help them. I'm standing against the Liberal Democrats, Labour, the Conservatives and the Greens. I don't be believe there's an independent candidate in the local election. Uh, well, firstly because I'm local, so like I said, I know the area, and um, I'm really willing to go out there and speak to people to see what they need and how they'd like me to vote and how I can help them. Um, the fact, like I said, we don't have a party whip, so I don't have to vote in line with what the parties say. I can do what's best for the constituents. Um, I always say, there's not a single policy in UKIP that is a racist policy. You know, if you can name one, then then I'll take maybe a point on board, but as far as I'm concerned, there's not a single policy within um, our party that suggests that we are, so I just say that they're completely wrong. Well, I wouldn't have a preference as far as I'm concerned, you know, a German immigrant and a Romanian immigrant, they're exactly the same as far as I'm concerned, but I do personally have an issue with um, integration. I think it's really important for immigrants who come here to, you know, learn the language and integrate in our society, not to stay but in a very, you know, um, I can't think of the right word to use, not to stay in an environment where they're just communicating with people who are still speaking their native language in this country, because it's not, I don't think it's appropriate and it's not nice, they should come here and they should embrace our culture. And, you know, it's brilliant that we have other cultures here, but if they're not going to communicate with us, if they're not going to integrate with us, then that's a bad thing, and we just need more integration, really. That's as far as the language barrier I'm concerned. Necessarily, I mean, if people want to speak in their own language, that's fine, but 
as far as I'm concerned, it's the fact that they need to know the language here and that they need to be integrating and not just staying in their social groups. Because otherwise, I just don't think it's pleasant. Because, I mean, you know, I'm in... I don't know, I can't... It's just not nice to not be able to communicate with people. Like, I work in hospitals and we have patients who come in who can't speak the language, whether it's their fault or another person's fault, I do not know. But it's just horrible because I can't communicate with them and I can't do my job. And you know, when I walk down the street, I like to say, like, you smile at people and say hello. And if they're not, if they are not willing to communicate, even if it's just a little smile or to say hello, then I just don't think it's pleasant. And it's not what you know, it's not what should be in British society today. You know, we should all be friendly and embracing each other and communicating with each other. It doesn't matter where you're from. You know, we all have to integrate and get on. Um, probably not. No. Um, such as what, for example? he's trying to make I do support because I think you know greater integration is really important but I mean I wouldn't be offended if a Romanian lived next door to me I wouldn't have an issue with that at all so yeah I think there's some brilliant policies in it I mean uh, also three great ones as far as I'm concerned is to increase NHS spending by three billion pounds a year that's a fantastic policy um, to put mental health on an equal footing to physical health, and that's a fantastic policy. And to increase mental health spending, that's brilliant as well. And uh, thirdly, animal rights to have CCTV in all slaughterhouses in the UK, that's a brilliant policy as well. I think as far as I'm concerned, as long as everybody's being treated equally, whether that's because of their sexuality or the colour of their skin, that's the main issue. I mean, I don't think you need specific policies for each area as long as everybody is treated equally. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be because of what um, what your sexuality is, because it could be what your race is, or it could be ha you know whether you're male or female. So as long as everyone's treated equally, that, that's the main thing as far as I'm concerned. No, not necessarily, because I think at the moment we've got to a point where we're pretty much you know, everybody's accepting of other people's sexualities, and if they're not, I find that it's mostly in the older generations who are never going to come round to that, and that's okay because that's how they've grown up. I think younger generations, such as myself, are very tolerant of people who've, you know, got different sexualities and things, and I honestly don't think that you could necessarily need to come up with a policy with that because I think it's quite well, um, it's well controlled at the moment, and I don't think there's any issues there. Oh, I love Birmingham, it's great. Um, I don't like some of the modern buildings, but I just think it's a lovely place to live and I really, really have enjoyed it here. Um, like I said, I think it's great as long as everyone can speak the language and integrate. Um, like even in Birmingham, I have had a bit of a culture shock when I first moved here because a lot of people actually can't speak the language. Like back home, if I say to someone like, oh, where's, where's such and such a place? And they can respond and say like, oh, it's over there. Or, oh, sorry, I don't know. But a few times I've bumped into ladies and sometimes men in the street and said, where's this? And they've been like, they don't understand what I'm saying. And I find that really sad. But um, as far as like the different cultures, it's brilliant because, you know, there's amazing food here. There's, it's great to meet different people. And working in the hospitals, it is actually great to have experience working with people of different cultures because back home I wouldn't have that experience. And now, if I go back home and work in a hospital and someone from a different culture comes in, I know how to treat them. And also language barriers, like I said, it's definitely a problem in the hospitals. But I've had experience trying to overcome that and I think that's brilliant in itself. So. Um, I like going walking, I like horse riding, I like knitting, um, there's all sorts of things that I like doing really, I'm not, well I probably am a bit boring, some might think, <laughs> but um, I grew up in Poynton which is near Macclesfield which is also close to Manchester if you don't know around there, um, I went to school at Poynton High School, went to college in Macclesfield, um, I don't know what to say really, I've worked in care homes lots of different care homes. I've um, done lots of jobs. I've worked as a care assistant, worked in kitchens. Um, like I, said, I currently work at Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. Um, that's about it, really. Um, just a really nice place where everyone gets on, where nobody's homeless, where no one goes without food, where no one's you know, in poverty. Um, people can help each other. People, like I say, people can integrate. People can communicate with each other. Just, uh, just a place where everyone helps each other, really. And it might seem really, sound really idealistic, but 
at the end of the day, in 2015, no one should in the UK should be going to a food bank because they can't afford to buy themselves food and no one should be sleeping on the streets. And unfortunately here in Birmingham it's happening and it's so wrong. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm not a big religion person. I think religion causes a lot more problems than it's worth. But as far as Islam's concerned, it's, it's on the same foot as Christianity. They're both probably as problematic as each other. Um, and I think the only reason that religion is problematic is because it causes arguments between people. But I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say UKIP is particularly Islamophobic. I've never come across any views within UKIP that have been like that. So I don't, I don't really think it's a real issue, but I just think, unfortunately, people have different views, um, whether it's one religion or another, and they clash with whether it's an atheist and a Christian or a Christian and a Muslim, and unfortunately, the views clash, and you obviously get these, um, what, what's the word? discrimination and all these things as a result but I just think it's probably because of different cultures and different views more than anything else. I think you've just got to make sure that they're in the appropriate um, place and that the building is appropriate because obviously if you're going to have a big mosque you might have a traffic problem, you might have um, a noise problem so it's just got to make sure it's probably in the most appropriate place so people aren't travelling too far to get there that the building isn't you know, an eyesore or noise pollution to people who are living locally so it's just probably more of a local issue to be honest than anything else making sure that planning permissions are right and things but as long as they've got the right number of them for the right number of people it's fine the difference that you've got between Britain First and UKIP is Britain First are just obsessed with race and Islamophobia and anyone who thinks like that is just very small minded and stupid as far as I'm concerned but however they associate that with immigration and therefore I think that's why they're probably inclined to vote for UKIP because UKIP won't proper controls on immigration but I don't think there's any ideological connections I think it's just the, they just sort of connect um, Islam with immigration which doesn't really make any sense to be honest because what UKIP saying is that if you're from Europe and you're unskilled then possibly you shouldn't be able to come here or you would need a work visa to come here whereas if you're from anywhere else in the world you know India, Pakistan where it's probably more likely to be Muslim um, you can come here if you've got the right skills so our, you know, our immigration uh, policy is the least racist immigration policy of all the parties so I think Britain first are sort of just voting for us on a it's not even an ideological, it's sort of, sort of a wrong terms really. They shouldn't be voting for us at all as far as I'm concerned. Well as far as I'd like more votes, I don't really, I don't want someone who's blatantly racist or thinks in that manner to vote for me to be quite honest with you. You know, their views are pretty vile and they don't really belong in, um, in well, in Britain in 2015, so you know. <laughs> as much as I can. I mean, it would be amazing if I was elected um, and I'd just like to, you know, go out there and really stand up for the local people and, you know, fight for them, try and make their lives better. Um, I doubt it, to be honest with you. Like, I'd like to be, become a local councillor because that's really what I would like to do is try and represent local people. And I know MPs sort of do do that, but I think the way that the electoral system has gone, a lot of MPs, just, MPs don't eat, just represent their constituents at all. So that the best way for me to go down is sort of the local route, just try and represent people on a local level. So I think that's where my future is really.